welcome to another exciting episode of Shipping OBC when Africa Business Radio. It's time we talk about young, strong, and empowered African women succeeding in their craft. We get to have conversations on their challenges and experiences in their work and personal lives and explore their ability to overcome. The show not only promises to be fun, but gives us insightful tips on careers, businesses, relationships, spirituality, and everything in between. So, welcome to the show. On the trivia today, we continue the series on building self-confidence. And the tip for the taking is surround yourself with positive people. It is important to pay attention to how your friends and people around you make you feel. Have you ever been with someone for a bit? The person leaves and you become moody, sad, sullen, or depressed. Do your friends lift you up or bring you down? Are they constantly judging or do they accept you for who you are? The people you spend time with influence your thoughts and attitudes about yourself more than you think. If you feel bad about yourself after hanging with a particular person, it may be time to say goodbye. So scrutinize the people around you today and choose what's best for your self-confidence. The show continues after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Shira segment. You're still listening to Shipreneur OBC on Africa Business Radio. And this segment is strictly to spotlight African women succeeding in their craft, getting to know their processes and celebrating them. So today we have a prolific, versatile dancer, instructor, teacher and entrepreneur. She trained and worked in Society for Performing Arts in Nigeria between 2011 and 2021, also in Lebanon and France. Smile now. <laughs> she won International Dance Organization Edo Championship in 2011 and was first runner-up subsequently. She has represented Nigeria in different salsa congresses and festivals in Africa. And she's one of the best female dancer and most sought after instructor in Latin and ballet in Nigeria. Welcome with me, Ndulue Uchenna, Monica. Thank you. Ndulue. Yes. (laughs) I got that right? Yeah, you did. Yeah. (laughs) So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for joining this conversation today. So we're here to celebrate you. Okay. Um, and we're going to be talking about the viability of dance in the 21st century. Okay. But first of all, how did you find dance? Why is a graduate of business administration dancing? What's the connect? <laughs> Help us understand. Okay. Yeah. Dance found me. Don't me finding dance. Mm. Because like my mom used to say, you started dancing from three. And since then, I've been dancing. While in primary school, I was dancing cultural dance. Wow. I got to secondary school, I was dancing hip-hop. I finished my schooling, I joined a dance group while waiting for admission to go to university. And then I found, I got a friend that was training in SPAN. And I'm like, okay, since I'm waiting for admission, why not join a dance school? So I trained in SPAN for four years and I'm a certified dancer. So Hmm. I've been dancing like all my life. Wow. And now. (laughs) <laughs> That's awesome. Thank but you. why aren't you doing Nigerian dance? Like I have I have this feeling that sometimes our dancers don't feel Nigerian dance is good to go international. Why ballet? I don't have anything against ballet. I did a bit of it as a classroom teacher to support the facilitators that came around at the time and um I love it. But w- why aren't you people looking into doing Nigerian dance and taking it international? Okay. So in SPAN, we are trained to be versatile. I did the Nigerian dance. I did cultural dance. I did the uh, Afro that you're doing now. I did hip hop, which is kind of Nigerian and then international. So I found the love for ballet, Latin, salsa, kizomba to myself. Everybody has a passion. Like when you learn dances, mm-hmm. there's one that is going to stick out. It's going to be like, this is yours. This is me. Mm-hmm. I can see myself here. And so I found the love for ballet, Latin dances, salsa, ballroom. 
I did not find love in Atilogo. Of course, I can. When, when, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm being thrown into choreographies, if I have a production to do that will have to learn different dances, mm. of course, I can do African dance mm. now. I can mm-hmm. do it. But I can't say I can teach it. Okay. Because I, I did not really go... You're not go passionate eat. about it. I am because, of course, if when they play... Let me just say, when they play Igbo songs, yeah. you see me dancing my really? traditional dance. Yes. Hey. I have the love for it. But okay. when it comes to work-wise... I don't think it's something that I have that passion to Pursue. teach, yes, mm. or to want to dance it. So I don't really know in depth about the cultural dances, but I know when I'm being thrown into choreographies or productions, you do I well. deliver, yes, yeah. because I'm a versatile dancer. Okay. So I won't say I'm leaving African dances for West African dances. No, I have everything, but I just have a passion. For for ballet, ballet and, Latin, kizomba. and kizomba. Where is kizomba? What, what's it's from up? Angola. Angola. Yes. Hmm. Awesome. So tell us about the dancing industry in Nigeria. How is there a dancing industry? That's one. And how structured are they? Yes, there's a dance industry in Nigeria, but being structured, I won't be biased. No, it's not. It's really not structured. We are all still trying to push on our own selves, not like we have like a head mm. that can just say, okay, this is how dance is meant to be. This is how you charge for dance. This mm. is how it's supposed to go. This is what you tell your clients. We don't have that. Mm. So everybody's so individually, pushing individually. Yes, we are wow. pushing ourselves individually. So I won't say there's a structure in dance, but we are still trying to get to that level. Mm. So, so what are some of the things that uh, you're doing individually to ensure that you get to a level where there's a bit of structure? Are you collaborating with any other individual dancers or everybody's just still minding their business? You no, know, yes, we are um, collaborating and we are also collaborating, not just me. Other people are trying to collaborate to see how they can make dance work. And another thing I do is when I have a job and I have a client, I try to tell people that, that are working with me that this is how you either bill your client or talk to your client. So they, they will know that dance is a serious business and not just, just come and dance for me. Come and play. Just come and, not even come <laughs> and play. When they use the word is it not just mm. dance? Really? To me, I feel insulted because mm. it's not just dance. It's business. It's work. We put in our time to rehearse, to practice, to perfect. We don't just do the dances. We have to rehearse, think about the steps, put them in our heads. Because we're doing like different steps at the same time. It's not easy. On a normal day, someone can just come and dance in church. You will get tired at a point. Mm-hmm. But when we are performing, you know, there are different dances. They are energetic back to back. So you cannot just say, come and dance. Is it not just dance? <laughs> so to me, it's if like... If it's just, why don't you do it? <laughs> yeah, and the way they say, come, just come and just dance for like two hours. In my mind, like, okay. Just for two hours? Two, in my mind, like, okay, sorry, but can you dance for two hours non-stop? A serious dance. Hmm. You better say, eh, but you know, I used to dance in church. That's a different <laughs> thing. Not professional dancing. Yeah. So it's a different... So I usually tell people I work with, like, tell your clients what you want. Tell them if they, if they have a show for you, tell them to give you a green room where you can change. Not just mm. telling you, you can just go and change there or go and change in the bathroom or go uh, find, find anywhere and change or go to your car and change. Mm. It doesn't work that way. We are an artist. Mm. We need that space to change and then relax Refresh. and prepare for mm. the performance to mm. come out well. Not just letting us go change anywhere. Mm. We're we not going to be ready. We'll be like, I don't understand why this client is behaving like this. So me, I usually tell my clients, this is what I want. I put it in my mail. I want a green room. I want refreshments. If you're going to keep us from social time to social time, at least should, there should be a refreshment for us mm. to be able to chill and wait. If it's an evening performance and you want us to be earlier, like in the afternoon, give us a green room. Give us refreshment for us to be there. Because at that point, we can't go out to get what we want. Make us be ready for your night or for your event. So we'll perform well, not just... Um, Okay, you can just stay anywhere. When we hang need around. You. Yes, hang around. <laughs> when we need you, we'll call you. No. So usually I tell, I tell people, I'm with. This is what you tell your clients. So they respect you and respect your work. Dance is, we are still battling with dance, yeah. actually. We are still battling. Because yeah. people don't see dance. Most people don't see dance as a business. Mm. So it's still kind of, when you talk to your client, it's still kind of, 
it's still a back and forth of them agreeing to what you want, but we're you, getting there. You, you sound very structured already. You sound like you have a system or <laughs> an organization. You're, you're very uh, particular about what you want and how you're treated when you go for jobs. And I like that. So yeah. if you're thinking of, you know, owning your own dance business already, you know, the mechanisms to put in place to have a proper organization. So yes. I, I really love that. But I Thank saw you. one of your, a dance videos on Instagram. I checked you out and I saw we kiss Daniel. Oh my. And I was like, whoa, this is hot. <laughs> you were just, uh, 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 uh. please, I need training now. No problem. I'm, <laughs> I'm training on your that. So let me ask you, what sort of, uh, dance jobs do you get? What sort of jobs do you get as a dancer? Okay. So I get wedding jobs. I get jobs to come teach either when you, um, um, how would I put it? Oh, what is this called? When someone wants to get married, uh, I'm trying to look for the name, bridal showers. Okay. So I get ladies tell me, okay, the ladies wants, just wants to dance. Either they want to dance salsa or they want to kizomba or just want to dance. So I get that kind of jobs. I get wedding jobs. I get, um, any event jobs. As far as they just want a performance, mm. then I have that. I, I'm also being invited to come perform outside Nigeria as well. So I've gone to Benin, Togo, Ghana. Wow. Subsequently, have you gone to, go to the perform. US and the UK? Not yet. You're getting I've there, performed, girl. I've performed in <laughs> Lebanon. I've performed uh -huh. in France as well. Uh-huh. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> On that note, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we ask uh, Ndulwe Uchenna yeah. how lucrative the dancing business is. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still listening to Shipper Now BC One Africa Business Radio. And I still have my delectable dancer, Ndulwe Uchenna Monica. And I said when we come back, she will tell us how lucrative the dancing business is. So, are you making money in yes. this business? Yes, I'm making money. You're making because money. Because I know my craft, yes. Mm. So I'm making money in the business. Mm. So how often do you get jobs? Okay, so um, when it comes to teaching classes, I teach basically... Almost every day. Hmm. When it comes to private or group classes, I teach every day. But when it comes to me performing, that doesn't come all the time. Because of events? Yeah, because it's you events. You have to wait for events. Yeah, so you have to wait for events okay. together. But when it comes to teaching classes, I do that almost all the time. So where do you see dance in Nigeria in the next five to ten years? I don't know. <laughs> That's the gospel truth. Wow. I don't know because we're still struggling to get to somewhere. But what about the body language that you see? Do you see a lot of people getting into dance, the dancing space? Yes, I do. Okay. Especially when it comes to Afro. I think that's what's raining in Nigeria right now or everywhere. Mm. Afro is raining. So, of course, more people are coming into dancing. Okay. What about opportunities for investors? So, for instance, I'm a businesswoman and I don't know where to put my money. Would you advise me to put it into a dance school, having like a dance school, a dance place, a dance? Yes. You should, because you're going to get your money back. Trust mm. me. Yes. When how how, how, how will I get my money back? You will, because uh, when they get to perform, people endorse them. Mm. They get to, the, the teachers, they get to teach. They get to get affiliated with schools outside the country and get to probably link you up with some, somebody outside the country mm. or even here. So definitely you will. I see. I hear a lot of um, salsa clubs around yes so people go with yes. their spouses yes over the weekend to yes. do some dancing are you looking into doing something like that i work with one presently okay yes. how how's the experience good <laughs> nice almost like every evening monday tuesday except sunday mm. do you get tips do you get a lot of tips no i don't get tips <laughs> okay so you're just yeah, because they usually pay per classes mm -hmm. they just come there to have fun chill out traffic mingle connect so that's it. So let's talk about all the things that you do. Okay. I know you're into fashion. Yes. And baking. Yes. <laughs> hey, you're multi-talented. So how do you, do you plan at some point in your life to take these other businesses seriously? Just like the dance. Yes, I do. That's why I quitted my work this year. Because I was having a one day on, one day off because of the COVID thing with work. So we're doing one day on, one day off, one day on, one day off. So I told myself, instead of staying at home and doing online classes with your days off, why don't you just go back to your baking? Because I, I was actually baking before I started dancing. So why not go back to your baking and then push it more out there? Mm. So I said, okay, let me go back and learn. So what do you bake? Cakes. Just cakes? Just cakes. Wow. 
So I started to go back and then learn. Because in 2017, I learned twice from different places. Okay. But I didn't put that into practice because of work. Okay. There was no time. Aww. So this year there was, last year there was time. So I started my fashion line. So this year, there was also time. I started to go back to my baking. Now to merge everything together, I had to quit work. Oh. Because I had to let one go. Mm. So I had to. So you can focus. Yes, to quit work to then build my company. Okay, so you so what, uh, Monique is all about now? What's your company name again? Ndu Monique's World. Ndu Monique's World. So you you showcase at the same time your dance. My dance. Your baking, your fashion. What's your fashion line about? What do you wear? What do you make? Okay, so. What do you sell? I I sell trendy and classy wears. Something you can wear out easily. Because, let me, use myself as an example for me i have majority of dance clothes and dance shoes because i don't like to go out often i don't have clothes for going out hmm. except to go for an event is that why you're wearing this imperi imperi <laughs> <laughs> you just what my i love used, it you just what my son used to say just like tiny clothes yeah, why are you like tissue paper <laughs> i grew up wearing tiny clothes uh-huh. so my mom usually buys me no crop top, yeah, like three piece crop yeah. top, a trousers. You and have a the body for it anyway. I love it. Are you sure? Yeah, you do. Okay, thank you. you. Do. <laughs> I don't think I do, but you thank do. you. You do. So, I sell um, trendy and classy wares. Okay. So I just use myself as an example. Why not um, venture into importing clothes? Because I like to buy clothes all the time. Even if I'm not going out, I mm-hmm. buy and then I dash out. Hmm. Because I don't like to go out. Not because I don't want to, but I just mm. don't like going out. Mm. So I buy and then that shot. And I told myself last year, people are not going out and they might want to go to the market or they might have like all those small house parties. Why not just keep importing these clothes and then sell to them? You have mm. workers that also, they just have work clothes, but they don't have clothes to go out because they, they really don't have the time to either go to the market, buy and then sell to them. And that's how I started. And that's how I started. Yes. I sold clothes for people. Like um, I have a tailor that works for me. So if um, a friend of mine has an event, uh, a wedding, or, or ushering jobs, and they need to sew clothes, I tell them, okay, what style do you want? If they say they don't know, I say, okay, let me see your material and tell you what, what would work with what this. What will work with this? Hmm. And it's okay. This is what I want. It's okay. This is what I want. What I want you can do to this clothes. And it's okay, fine, but I don't know any tailor. Do you want me to sew it for you? They say yes. And I take the clothes and give it to my tailor. Make sure I monitor the clothes hmm. till the finishing stage. And then get it close to them. So I've been sewing. I sew usually um, dance costumes. So I usually um, costumes, events, dance shows. So I sew. But well, I, I wanted to do something different outside sewing. Mm-hmm. Important clothes. Mm, that's something awesome. that is, yes, easily, easy, can easily, you can easily get. Then when you say, ah, I think I have an event this evening. Where can I quickly order clothes from? So I started to import clothes last year. That's awesome. I'm Thank really you. happy for your business. And I Thank hope it's you. moving. You're yes, getting customers. Is. Yes. Hmm. Thank you. Great. So um, I realized that um, some people struggle with doing exercises, probably because there's no right motivation and they may need music. So personally, I love to dance and I can dance for hours nonstop. But once you call it exercise, it scares me. Are you thinking in that line where you do these dance exercises for people who want to keep fit, lose weight? Are you looking in that direction? I think there's money there. Yes, there's money there, but for me, I don't, I, I'm not looking in that line. Because at a point, I was doing that for my clients. They just want to do dance exercise. And I found out that they just like me dancing. <laughs> and they'll be watching you. Thank you. They'll be like, wow, you dance so well. I say, ma, please, sir, please don't watch me. Please, can we do it? I know I can dance so well, but she wants to lose weight. Let's do this. I say, okay, do you know what? Let's just dance for like 30 minutes. And then please just dance. I like the way you dance. <laughs> Maybe because with, you are giving them complicated styles. Because I've I'm, seen your okay, that's, moves. That's yeah, you have to no, tone it down. Okay, that's me dancing alone. But when I'm dancing with my clients, of course, I give them what they can because I'm a dance teacher. Okay. I learned dance mm-hmm. and I learned how to teach as well. So I know how to break down the stance of I know your level and then I give you your level. Okay. Then we'll move up from there. So when I do these classes often, at the point I told myself, which you are the one losing weight. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just... <laughs> Why not just just quit this thing, or give them to your fr- give your clients to your friend that you know this is what they want to do. Okay, they don't mind losing weight, but this is this is what gives them joy doing dance workouts. Before I, customers will pay you to be dancing for them. <laughs> as a, and to me, I don't feel that way when a client tells me I want to achieve this at this time. 
and I don't see them achieving anybody are paying me. Mm. I don't feel calm. Even when I teach they are kids, not dancing. Yeah, they are but even when, even when I teach kids, I usually tell their parents. I know kids sometimes can be, uh, mommy, mommy, mommy. I tell the parents, please, can you not be in my class? Your nannies can be there, but mm. no when mommies are around, mm. nothing's going to happen. But yeah. when nannies are there, they will say, I will put it to mommy, yeah. and then they maintain. They sit up. Yeah, so I will just tell them. Sometimes I'll tell my parents, my, 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 my clients, like the parents of the kids, uh, today I might exercise the kids to a particular level that they might get hurt. Not like getting hurt, but you know, stretches, uh, hurt sometimes. They will cry, but just so that I did not beat them, beat them. <laughs> yes, it's just exercise, which you know, you've gone through that process at the time growing up, but then you'll say, okay, I understand. Hmm. So that's like, I want to see my work. Why you are paying me, not just paying me. No, mm. I want to see my work. So sometimes I tell my parents, I can't continue with this class because I'm not seeing my work. Mm. I know you are paying me good and fine. I want the money, yes. But at least I need to still see my you work. So I tell my, results. yeah, so I yeah. still tell my clients, please don't watch me dance. I'm <laughs> going to <laughs> dance with me. <laughs> so sometimes they dance and they say, do you know what? Just dance, please. And I say, okay, do you know what? I'm going to get, um, someone that can always come and dance if you mm. just want to dance mm. and then mm. so i usually give my workout clients to a friend of mine that i know whether i tell the person to dance or not to dance to work out is the person's go-to time mm. that's what makes a person happy and the person okay. keeps doing it mm. so of course there's money in dance that, workout yeah there is, it's also it's about my... specialization i'm happy yes. you know where you want to be yes yeah it sir. makes a lot of sense so what advice would you give to a young girl who uh, wants to join the dance industry in nigeria okay so at first i would say please look for a dance school to train it's very very important you will know the business of dance. You will know how to structure mm. yourself because if you don't have that foundation, that's why, let me just say, many people out there, being clear, many people out there are struggling with dance or they are not making money from dance because they don't know the business of dance. Mm. They are just mm. dancing or people are just using them to make money for themselves. So I, I will just tell the, the girls out there or even the young guys, go out there, look for a dance school, Learn. I learned for four years. It mm. took me time, but mm. at least I learned. I was battling school and my dancing. I did part-time for seven years <coughs> because of dance. So I was battling the two of them and I was working at the same time. But mm. I just wanted to achieve something with dance. So they should go out there, look and for learn. a dance school, learn. When you learn, you also get the business of dance. Well, mm. they, do, they don't just teach you dance. They teach you how to make money with dance. They teach you from the beginning. You write exams. We write. Hmm. We do research. For dancing. Yes, for wow. dancing. We write. We do exams. If you fail, you repeat. <laughs> it's not a, it, dance Sounds not funny. a joke. Wow. Yes, it is serious. Wow. I wrote. I did research. Wow. So it's not easy. So if you don't do these things, at the point, you feel like you're not moving forward. You won't even take yourself serious. That's it. Hmm. So that, that's why they would feel like, ah, let me leave dance for something else. And you also went to school. You studied business administration. Ma- I did. <laughs> For seven years, yeah. not a joke. Wow. Why, why, why? Oh, okay. Part so I did time. OND and HND. I wanted to ask what happened. Yes, was I it did OND. Strike? No, no, no. Okay. It didn't have, affect me. So I did OND, but I was doing full time with dance, learning dance, and then working because they retained me in my office mm-hmm. while I went to um, school for dance. So I was working and then doing part time Saturday, Sunday. So I didn't have. I wish we had space. I would have asked you to give us some moves here. <coughs> but we don't have space. So uh, I'm going to let you go in a minute. But first okay. of all, if anybody wants to reach out to you, how do we meet you? How do they come to you? Okay, so you can uh, get me on my Instagram, Ndu Monique, on Facebook, Ndu Monique. My email address is there as well. That's it. Yes. That's or it. Or my phone number. <laughs> 080 okay. Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. I enjoy you. Thank I enjoy you. the conversation and I wish you all the best in your thank future you so endeavors. Much. And I hope that you own a dance school someday. Walk into us that. Yeah, make big money someday. Yes, we need the money. And come and coach me on some of those moves so that when I what? use those moves, <laughs> ah, there we know. There we know something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You're That's it on Shipreneur OBC One Africa Business Radio today. If you have any suggestions on how the show can be better, send a DM to Africa Business Radio on Instagram or BC Ubo on Instagram and we'll get to it. Till I come your way again next time. Bye bye.